Bali and in the studio I've just been raiding the fridge found some vegetables for this incredible rice paper dumpling something different gluten-free and all the things and I was looking for potato starch but I couldn't find any but I've got arrowroot which is fine and it's Mr. Bob Red Mills who I love I love this guy I love this whole family I love the whole company you know why I love it so much because the entire company gives profits to the employees not just a wage, it's profit share. And I think that's entrepreneurial. It's big picture thinking and it has purpose. And that's why I love it so much. Okay, let's get into this incredible recipe. I've got basic vegetables here. I've got cabbage. Now have a look at this cabbage. Very different to cabbages in Australia and New Zealand that I've seen before. It's flat. Cabbages in Australia are big like this. Very different. Just looking at my friend Lasmi over there. She's like, oh really? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So they're very different here in Indonesia. I've got some carrots, some mushrooms, really nice mushrooms actually. You can use button mushrooms, shiitake, whatever you want to use. I've got some portobellos here which are great. Some spring onions which look giant but they're very airy. <laughs> they're not like the spring onions back home. Very interesting, good flavour. I've got some garlic and I've got some tofu. Now I have a I would say this would be a hard tofu, yeah? So there's silken, soft, medium, hard and firm tofu that I know of. And I would say this would be a hard, no, maybe it's a medium. Anyway, that's what you're after, okay? Something that's just not gonna fall apart um, as you're holding it. And then I've got some brown rice paper. So just random stuff I found in my cupboard. And I've got some arrowroot flour. You could use corn flour, potato starch, potato flour depends what you have. Now I'm going to somehow put this all together. So bear with me because I've never made this before and I'm hungry and I can't wait to put this together. I want flavor. Um, I'm going to cut this all up, grate it. I'm going to use my grater, my dad's grater actually, which my mum said to me the other day, she said, can you please bring back dad's grater? I said, mum, you gave me this two years ago and dad's no longer with us. So can I just have the grater? She was so funny about it. No, I'm not bringing it back. <laughs> I'm keeping it. <laughs> Uh, memories of little things. My dad used to grate his um, beetroot, capsicum, no joke, capsicum, carrot on this grater every day and make uh, this huge salad sandwich would be about that big. I'm not joking with brown bread and then he would squish it. It would take him 45 minutes to an hour to eat it. And this grater has so many memories when I was a child in New Guinea and the office at lunch hour when he used to have his sandwich. And then when we moved to Australia, this grater, this grater has always been in the family, so I love it. Okay, let's get started. Ah, oh, the memories been grating carrots, I swear. Ah, oh, food ignites so much, I don't know, just not just memories, but it really ignites something quite phenomenal for me anyway, especially with this grater. Just not just my dad having the salad sandwich, but you know, just, he used to whistle us, whistle to, uh, for us to come home when we were kids. So we would run around the streets of New Guinea, you know, at the back of his workshop. And when it came 5.30, instead of calling out for us, looking for us, he would whistle and we would know that whistle. Like things like that are coming up for me as I'm grating these carrots, so cool. I'm gonna grate the tofu now. And like I said, this is, it's not falling apart tofu. And that's what you want, so you want to be able to grate it. Mm. 
This looks like cheese. <laughs> it really does. It's amazing, isn't it? It's good tofu, this one. This is 200 grams of, of um, hard tofu. All right, perfect, look at that. All right, set that aside. And let's get onto our mushrooms. I'm gonna try and grate these. I've never done this before. Normally I chop them. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, it does, this is great. <laughs> get it? I did a joke, this is great. Nobody's laughing. How easy is this dish? It's so funny. One of the cameramen here is Wira. He's just had a little boy and just recently married and he's in love. <laughs> and he gets onto the phone and his wife and he goes, hi, yeah, yeah. And then the other cameraman, Komong, who's behind this camera I'm staring at, he's been married for a long time and gets on the phone to his wife and goes, hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> so the difference is beautiful. <laughs> And to no. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, so that's nicely grated. Next is the cabbage. Can I grate the cabbage? Is that even possible? Let me cut it in half first and see. No, I'm going to shred it with my knife. Now you're going to probably use a quarter of your cabbage because the cabbages everywhere else around the world, except for Indonesia, are um, really big. So use about a quarter. Nice and thin slices, as thin as possible. And when you can no longer hold it, right, and you're feeling a little bit wobbly, turn it on its side like this, right? Cut it in half. Let's push this aside for a minute. Cut it in half and then go here and do the same thing. Look at this glory. All right, next is spring onions. I can I use all of these? Look really big, but they're not. They're very airy. They're just light. They just feel very, very light. Okay, we need to wash them because in there is some dirt. I love this sink. I love how big it is, how I can hide things in here and no one can see. <laughs> and this is a really old palm sugar. Um, what do you call it? Palm sugar wok. And what I did was I made a hole, actually my friend made a hole in the bottom and we made it into a sink. But can you imagine they collect the palm syrup and then they put it in here, they put this on top of a fire and they have this big stick and they just in Indonesia and they do this and this palm sugar just whips and whips and whips until it becomes um, really emulsified and they put it into a coconut shell and they set it. And this is where it gets heated in that beautiful sink. Well, walk, sink. All right, slice this up thinly. Nice and fine. Shoulders back, good intention. Cooking is freaking hard, I get it, it, takes time. But just know you're nourishing yourself with plants and I think that's a really big win for our organs here. All right, I've got about 400 garlic cloves here. I think I'm gonna need two, four, six, Just running your knife through, making sure it's all chopped up as fine as you possibly can. Don't stress. If you've got a um, garlic, and I mean don't stress, is like don't think that you've got to do it like me. If you've got a garlic press, use that. Sometimes people grate the garlic as well. Just go with your flow. I'm just your little guiding light here at home in your kitchen. All right, boom, plants. Now we need flavor. I'm thinking sesame seed oil, tamari. I'm not gonna put chili in because I think I'll put that in the actual sauce. What else? I think that's all I have. Maybe some maple just to balance it out. All right, I've got some rice vinegar. I think I'm gonna use that. I've got some maple. It's really interesting when you don't, I think that's sesame seed oil, when you don't label things. It's very interesting, it wakes you up. You go, what the hell is that? Tamari, anyway, let's, have, let's give them a good smell and see what happens. Because they look the same, right? The maple and the sesame seed all looks the same. So to just to double check. Definitely maple. Definitely sesame seed oil. This is what I do in my online cooking classes, by the way. I don't label anything and it just gives you a moment to go, geez, what's in that? To going, wow, my taste bud memory remembers that that's sesame seed oil. And I think that's really good for our brain to remember what things are when there's no labels. It's really quite delicious. Okay, I have rice vinegar, 
I have maple, I have sesame seed oil, I have tamari, I have vegetables, right, all over here. I have my rice paper ready. I have some arrowroot for thickening the situation up because we want it to hold because there's no rice in there. Now we're going to cook it down. All right, grab a pan. This is a beautiful little pan I've had for so many years. I can't even remember what brand this is because it's, it's all been worn off. And I love this. It's, it's some sort of a wokism. Don't know, but I love it. It's been with me for so long. All right, high heat. And now we're gonna add a good splash of sesame oil. I reckon a good tablespoon and a half, actually. Oh, that's a good splash. I'm gonna add my carrots in. Tofu and mushrooms in. Watch your hands, even though I'm doing that, don't you do that, use a spoon. I just have these asbestos hands. And there's some of that mushroom that didn't grate down, just rip it up. Get that cabbage in. Then your spring onion. Get that pan up nice and high. Notice how I haven't added the garlic in yet. Just wait, let this wilt down a little bit. We want this to completely just shrink down. I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper, not salt right now because I'm adding tamari and tamari is a soy sauce. Even though I've got a reduced salt um, soy sauce, it's still really salty and you wanna add the salt in last because if I over salt now, I can't take it out. So that's why I always add it last when I'm doing dishes like this. So some really nice, beautiful, freshly ground black pepper. Big pinch. This is wilted down beautifully. I'm so excited. That was five minutes of doing that and standing near the stove. Now I'm gonna add my garlic. The reason why I'm adding it last, all those little bits off the board actually, because I didn't want the flavor to wash away. That's probably the biggest reason. I want it to be in there. So now comes the flavoring. Soy sauce, at least two tablespoons of soy sauce. Yeah, around about two tablespoons. I think that's enough. One tablespoon of rice vinegar for now. I just want that acid to come across. Give this a really good stir. Now this is when you taste. So much of me wants to put ginger in here, but I'm not going to because I'm gonna put it in the sauce. Anyway, I definitely need salt. That's why it's important to do it after the tamari. And I definitely need a little bit more pepper too. So I think it's around about a good 15 minute cook all up. That first initial stages, which took about five minutes. Okay, now have a another taste. Let's see where it's at. It's very hot. It's wiltering down perfectly. Hot, 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 hot. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. I want a little bit more of that liquid to come out of those mushrooms and that cabbage. And how do I even know that? Well, this is one thing with us cooks is we all do things differently. I can tell by just looking at it that there's so much liquid in the vegetables still, even though there was no liquid in the pan, as you can see, but I can tell that there's still liquid in the vegetables. So I'm gonna cook it for another couple of minutes, which means it's a 15 minute cook all up. All right, as that's simmering away, doing its thing, I need a little bit of arrowroot flour or potato starch or potato flour or corn flour. I just need to really grab onto these vegetables with something because there's no rice in here, right? So I need that stickiness. So grab yourself a small bowl. So I'm gonna do like a heap teaspoon of that. And then I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of water. Just a little bit. It's only a touch just to make that slurry. Now, even just looking at this, I think I need more. So I'm gonna do another teaspoon. 
because it just doesn't seem like that's enough, right? So I'm gonna do another teaspoon of arrowroot, but not a heat one this time. All right, there we go. Into there. A little bit more water to make that slurry. Okay, now we're good. All right, back over to the stove. Now have a look in my pan to see any liquid. Now it's starting to look quite dry now and it's really wilting down. This is brilliant. I'm gonna evenly just pour this all over and then I'm gonna mix this very well. Oh, I can see it's all coming together. Just that tiny little bit just brings it home. You wanna cook that for about a minute Turn it off, clean up your area, get a tray ready with lukewarm water so we can dip our rice paper into it. We're gonna need two sheets per dumpling and you're gonna need a frying pan to stick them in so they get nice and crispy and brown. I'm gonna use my ironclad pan. I talk about these guys all the time. Amazing. Generation after generation, this pan will be passed down in my family. Ironclad. Google it. Actually, I'll put the link below. These are the pans to have, everybody. They're, they're amazing. I'm going to create a non-stick surface. And I've done this in a few of my videos. And I'm very proud to do it over and over and over again because I love it. You heat it up till it gets to smoke point. And then you get a cloth and you put some coconut oil in the cloth or a paper towel and you wipe the pan to create that non-stick area. That is genius. Can you believe that? So this pan through three generations will be given to family members that will have a non-stick surface because of seasoning the pan every time you use it. So high heat, um, get it nice and hot. Also, I just want to recognize with Ironclad, they do send you one of these, which is a really gorgeous little leather pouch that goes over here, which then I don't burn myself. Ah, genius. So as that's doing that, its thing, I'm gonna grab some paper towel and get my coconut oil ready. Now I need to figure out which one is not rice vinegar and which one is coconut oil. Aha, that's coconut oil, I can tell. Okay. That's heating up, towel, coconut ready to season. We need a tray for this. Now I don't need boiling hot water. I just need a really good tray. Well, that was a good idea, I think, because it's round. Sometimes I swear my genius is great. Now I need some water. All right, smoking, check it out. Turn it down to a low. Get that oil ready to season that pan. So see, I've poured it onto the sheet. Now, if you need tongs to hold this, get some tongs. I'm okay because my hands are always in heat. <laughs> my friends say I have asbestos hands. All right, it's on a super low, yeah. Now I'm gonna get my rice paper. Low, seasoned, beautifully done, perfect. This is when you add about a tablespoon of oil in there to just get that rolling around, that non-stick surface that we created. Rice paper straight into the water. I just want to show you how this is sliding around on the pan. And that's not because there's oil in it, that's because of the seasoning in the pan, then you put the oil in. Look at that. 
Oh, genius. Just wanted to really re just hone in on how amazing these pans are and the company is incredible. All right, there's a lot of water here, okay? Water and oil don't go together, so that's why I'm putting it onto the towel, just briefly, just to damp anything off. And then I'm gonna go straight into the pan. Now let's turn this one over to see the color. That's what we want, a nice dumpling. All right, continue on. Okay, this is still hard. It's not completely soft, that's important. As that goes down, that one goes in. And then my filling goes on top of this, like that. Don't put too much in, Cynthia. You're known for that. Now it's got a bit softer since it's been sitting. I'm making a square, little prezzy. Pushing that back, don't be afraid. It does get a little bit slippery, but don't be afraid. Okay. Now we get that paper. Once again, still soft. Oh, sorry, still a little bit firm. Back in here. Look at that, it is still quite firm. That's what we're after. Onto the cloth, get some of that extra water off. Straight into the pan, be careful. Come back over here, that one we put in before. Put that over, perfect. Still going on that side, perfect. And rinse and repeat. I love these. Look at them. Oh, delicious and soft inside. That's what I want. I'm just getting a little bit ginger, peeling all the bad bits off, you know? <laughs> Don't need to peel ginger as much, you know, like a lot of people, especially organic ginger. This is my standard little, little recipe that I've got pretty much in a lot of my uh, amazing you know, recipes over the years, especially my first cookbook as well. Um, Plant-based love stories, get it, get it, get it. You can get the digital version. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it in my store. Get it, get it. It's amazing. It's got so many beautiful stories. This dressing is pretty much my signature dressing when it comes to like dipping sauces. So I've got ginger, I've got tamari, I've got some, hope that's rice one, yeah, rice vinegar um, for a bit of acid. Um, sesame seed oil, some maple, and I think I want some chili flakes. And all I'm gonna do is create a balance of umami. Umami. Create a balance of umami. So, ginger, about a thumb, half a thumb, I reckon, about that much. I'm just gonna grate it into here. Perfect, I'm gonna add I think two tablespoons of tamari. No, I'm gonna add three. <laughs> three tablespoons of tamari. Perfect. One tablespoon of rice vinegar, just for that acid. I need the fat, the savory, which is sesame seed oil, which is around about one tablespoon. And then I want the sweetness of the maple which is about one tablespoon to start with. You can adjust it and add more if you like. And then I want a bit of these yummy chili flakes, just a pinch, and that's optional. Now you're gonna put a bit of pepper in this, give it a really nice stir. And now you're gonna taste. Oh my God, it's genius. A little bit more pepper. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, that rice wine vinegar just brings it home. Oh my God. Okay, and then we're gonna eat them. <laughs> Seriously, have a look. Come nice and close into my world. Oh, which one? Maybe this one. It's crispy and also soft, that's what I want. Okay, chopsticks and me are funny. <laughs> sometimes I can do it and sometimes I can't. Come on, Cynthia, grab it. All right, here we go, here we go. Here's the moment of truth. Oh. 
only. It's really good. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. You know what I want? I want a bowl of rice with this. I don't want salad, I want rice. I'm standing over a rubbish bin by the way. with chopsticks and your hands. <laughs> mm. Blessing to the Asian culture, how they do this so well at the age of two. <laughs> and here am I the age of 50. I can't even do it properly, my gosh. Mmm. 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 If you can get, oh my God, if you can get a hold of brown rice paper, you are on a roll because that is tasty. So much more tastier than the white rice paper. All right, that's it for me. See you next time. Mm.